Hello guys and welcome to today's Build a Boat for Treasure video. Today I'll be showing you how to make some of these advanced mechanisms that I have behind me. And without much further ado, let's get straight into the video. So our first mechanism here is going to be known as the belt. So I'm going to show you how to build that right here. So first you want a rotational power source like this wheel. And then somewhere else you have something that you want to rotate with it. So I'll use this. I'll make a bar on this end on the hinge. And you want to make sure that these bars are an equal length across um, both sides. So as you see here, I cannot place this in the middle because it's not um, eagle, so I gotta drag it over one more bit that way. Now that this bar is right in the center, I can place it between these two. And now I can go into these settings here, and you'll see I want to turn the angle limit to 180. And keep match rotation on. And now when you place a lever and unanchor everything, these two objects will rotate together. And there you go, you see that this rotational power is moving this hinge. This also works with ropes too. Um, you might need to add a little extra length in the settings and you can make them move. Our next machine here is going to be the rotation angler. And I will show you how to build that now. So we want a rotational power source. It can be a wheel or a hinge. I mean, not a hinge, it can be a wheel or a servo. And you want to have one hinge facing up on the wheel. And then over here we'll make another hinge that uh, we want to keep square uh, with the other hinge. So I'll show you what I mean there. You can measure that by placing a block in the middle and scaling it until it meets both ends the same way. And you see how it says 5.5 and 5.5. That's what you want. You want both numbers to be the same when you scale it to reach both hinges. So now um, what I need to do is I need to make something that this hinge rotates around. So we'll do that as another hinge. And you want to make sure that it's the same distance. So you see. This is the wrong distance, I need the hinge to be just halfway into the block, um, so it's the same as that one. Now we're going to get this attached to the ground here, and now what we want to do is we want to get a spring and put it on these two hinges, make sure that it's at that perfect 90 degree angle. Now go into these settings and set this max length to the highest you can, target length isn't really important. Um, Max length went down, I fixed that again. And then you want to do stiffness and damping as 0 and 0. And your minimum length should be like 1 or 0 0.5. Now I'm going to fix these wheel settings and you'll see we're going to make this turn. Uh, anchor it off. And... Oh, it looks like it bugged out. Sometimes hinges will uh, glitch when you move them, so I'm going to rebuild this really quickly. Yeah, it's not going to turn. Give me just a moment. So I fixed that there, and now you'll see when we turn this wheel, it makes the other one spin by um, moving it around with the hinge on the springs. Um, you can also use this machine to reverse the rotation of a wheel. So you see, if you hook two up together on this side wheel, you'll see this top one is spinning clockwise, while the bottom one is spinning counterclockwise, which is pretty useful. The next machine here is going to be a wheel-powered piston, so I'll show you how to build that now. So first we want something to put our wheel on, so I'll build a little pole here, and we'll grab our wheel. And now we want to hinge on the wheel, um, further apart makes the piston go higher and lower. Now I add a little bar, um, part of the piston shaft, and another hinge. Then we go down, and this is the part of the piston that will go up and down, um, that's on the second hinge. So now, um, something that I do is I gotta replace the hinges so that they don't glitch, because when you scale an object next to a hinge it bugs out. Um, now we'll do that here. This hinge is safe because it's pointing towards the other thing. Now copy that, so we need a platform to put the spring on above here. Uh, this is why I like starting with the hinge on the top of the wheel, because then I can get a good estimate of how high the spring will go. Uh, I need to fix this so it's in the center. And uh, there we go, now I get the spring right in the center. And you want to go into your spring settings and turn the um, length as high as you can let it go. And then take your sniffness and dampening and set those both to zero. And now once you've done that, um, I'm going to turn this wheel to be slower so you can see it moving. 
you can start your machine and it should work as intended. So here we go, unanchoring everything. And there you see, we have the wheel spinning around, and with that piston shaft going up and down, we have made a wheel-powered piston. Our next machine here is going to be a piston-powered servo, and I'm sorry about this uh, motor engine in the background, it was just there. So, first we're going to have to make a hinge um, with something that we want to be rotated. So, I'm going to place that as a wooden shaft here. Scale it into the right size. And next up, we want to put the uh, hinge on this second block. Actually, I need to make this taller for it to fit. So let me make this up a little bit. Much better. Now, we want to put a hinge on a block um, down below it. Um, it looks like I have to move this out further. Um, a little bit further still, actually. Now I angle this uh, hinge out. Put the piston on the hinge, facing up towards the shaft. Face another hinge on the shaft, and now connect that hinge to the piston. And now, once I scale that down here, you'll see you'll have a piston servo. So I'm going to turn this piston length down a little bit, because I don't think that the 10 will fit. And now we're going to unanchor this, and you'll see when I click on this piston, our hinge rotates. This is useful if you want to make um, some accurate or um, strong servo devices and it's also good because you'll see if I use a vehicle chair here I can control exactly where it stops so you can use it for car steering. Our next mechanism here is going to be called a universal joint so I will show you how to build that here. So first you'll have a angle, something that you can angle where you want your joint to swivel around so I'm going to use a servo here. Now below that we are going to make a small block so let me scale this down. You want to make sure that it is exactly in the middle of the servo, so once I shrink this down here, I'm going to check both sides to make sure it's matching under there and under there. So now that we have that in the middle, we're going to take our hinges and we're going to face them into the block and place them all the way around it, um, except for in the front and then back. Now we're going to go into these hinges and make them all collision off. And now I'm going to connect these two hinges um, on the same side together. So I'm going to do that by making a little shaft here. Copy that this way. And now I'm going to connect these two together. Oh. And that shaft going that way is where our rotation will come out of the angle. And now, um, I'm going to copy this over to the other side, so let's mirror it. Now select these again, rotate it to the top and bottom ones, and now we put it back in there. And now once we have all this in place, I will um, turn, off the, uh, the, turn off the collision for these ones too. Now I'm going to place the wheel to power this. Uh, on this side, bring it back over a bit so that it's not clipping inside of that. Now I'll connect this other side to the hinge, and we will connect that to the end of the servo. Actually, I just put it underground, I don't know what I'm thinking. Alright, so, oh, that didn't go in the middle. Alright, so this is going to be connected to the servo now. Let me make it look fancy. And this side we're going to connect to the ground as well as the wheel, so both of these we want on the shaft into the ground. And now I am going to place this seat to control the servo, and I will control the wheel with the switch. And now i um, going to turn the servo speed and wheel speed down, so you can see what's happening turn the torque up a little bit because this uh, machine does need a little bit of torque to get through. And now um, I'm going to save and load because uh, the hinges might glitch. So, alright, it didn't glitch. And now you'll see when we turn on this, um, you can see the rotational angle coming out will go with this servo. So let me slow it down so you can see it moving. And this, this mechanism, as you can tell, is pretty advanced. Um, but you can use it to make a pretty cool looking vehicle uh, with like an actual drivetrain underneath it. 
And as for that, that is the end of this video. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around and have a good day. Like and subscribe if you feel like it.